In photo soundbite 1, we saw how shutter speeds and apertures create an accurately exposed photograph when the camera is set to auto. However, by renouncing auto or program, setting the shutter speed manually will be more creative for the photographer. The camera's shutter opens the aperture. Depending on the intensity of light, this could be from several seconds to a minute fraction, even shorter than one thousandth of a second. In sunlight, Auto will probably use a shutter speed around a four hundredth of a second, but on a dull day that could be extended to a thirtieth of a second, even longer. Auto changes this automatically, but it could instead make the aperture larger. Either way, it allows more light to reach the sensor, and in most cases you won't know which it chooses. Neither does the photographer have any control, but taking control of these actions could make a difference, turning a snap into a photograph. However, let's first turn the clock back 50 years to film photography prior to camera computerization and see how we learnt about shutter speeds, apertures and exposure. This was my first camera, an Agfa Select, purchased in 1959 for the princely sum of £9, 17 shillings and 6 pence. This camera is fully manual. It has no exposure meter. Therefore, the photographer must set both shutter speeds and apertures manually assisted by a separate exposure meter or a leaflet enclosed inside the film carton giving precise exposure guidance. An older generation may still regard this as real photography, and I too hold the belief that the moment we place the exposure meter inside the camera, we started to lose the plot of photography. Important are the basic shutter speeds engraved around the lens barrel, which can be changed by rotating its ring. Notice that as you move up or down the scale, the shutter speed roughly halves or doubles in value. It is worth remembering this for later soundbite programs, because today's computerized cameras will not only show additional values above and below, but about every imaginable fraction in between, which doesn't help when teaching the basic principles of image exposure. Referring to the mode dial on today's camera, when set to S or TV on Canon and some other cameras, the photographer must choose the appropriate shutter speed for the job in hand. The good news is that when the shutter button is depressed, the camera will instantly find the right aperture for correct exposure. Different shutter speeds create different visual effects on subjects that have movement, but the right shutter speed can only be learnt by trial and error. There are also many subjects to choose from, but as a meaningful exercise I will select just one. Water in its natural environment. Here are several images showing how its appearance changes according to different shutter speeds. This cannot be done on auto. It may be possible on program, which I will discuss another time, but regard this advice as a first important step away from auto and the mundane world of instant gratification. <laughs>